All right, so I'm going to read the final chapter in this first part of the book. It's called uh, The Truth as Person. It's chapter 13. Um, the last few chapters, and I'm skipping through here, take us through Eugene's life in college and um, as he studied first under Alan Watts um, and then was introduced to the work of Rene Ganon, uh, who is a uh, religious uh, scholar. He studied uh, Western metaphysics and the authentic uh, religious traditions. He was uh, Eugene was affected by his work greatly. Um, and then Eugene found Oriental studies where uh, he studied under the uh, authentic transmitter of, of Chinese philosophy, Ji Ming Xian, who had a tremendous impact on him as well. And he followed him uh, to a few different places um, and was really close with him, corresponded with him a lot, and uh, really uh, dug into the Chinese philosophy there. Um, he had a few experiences that led him to what I'm going to read here. I'm reading through this. I'm going to do it probably in two parts because there's just a amazing quote, two of them really, that really are um, are just uh, impactful, really were really meaningful to me, and I hope they are to you as well. So I'm going to just start here in the chapter. So throughout his search, Eugene had continued to attend ser services in the Orthodox churches of the city. Describing what he had experienced there, he wrote, quote, Still, in the deadness of the city, there is a spark of sobernost, togetherness, community, end quote. As we have seen after attending the Holy Week and Pascha celebrations in the Russian Cathedral in 1957, he said that he had never seen such joy and, quote unquote, togetherness in people. After this, after attending the Holy Week and Pascha celebrations in the Russian Cathedral, oh, sorry, uh, togetherness in people, after this, he concluded, quote, the outside world is dreary indeed. Everywhere people are only pieces, fragments of a broken whole. One realizes this too intensely after such a holy week. Close quote. Eugene himself was one of those fragments, part of the outside world that could only look in, not fully sharing in the joy and the oneness. His long years of desperation, alienation, and suffering, however, had been preparing him for the time when he could at least enter in, quote, when, conver when conversion does take place, close quote. He said in later years, uh, quote, the process of revelation occurs in a very simple way. A person is in need, he suffers, and then somehow the other world opens up. The more you are in suffering the dif and difficulties and are desperate for God, the more he is going to come to your aid, reveal who he is, and show you the way to get out, close quote. Quote, Eugene had been running from God for so long, Allison had said, and the more he had sinned against him, the harder God had pursued him. Finally, he could run no longer and surrendered, close quote. Now, even while languishing in the depths of hell, Eugene dared, uh, dared to turn and call out to him against whom he had rebelled, striving to tame his rebellious spirit with acceptance and humility. He wrote in a pivotal passage dated February 28th, 1959, quote, What suffering has not God reserved for man in this age? As though man had not suffered enough already throughout all the ages. No, it is simply that man has not realized the presence of God in his suffering. God is allowing man to suffer now without revealing himself as the cause of that suffering. He wishes man to be reduced to the very utmost of despair. What a cruel God this must be. No, it is the infinite and incalculable love of God that makes him allow us so much suffering. Man had thought himself sufficient, and even now he, we think we can escape our destiny by our own efforts. Escape, that is our only thought to escape from the insanity, the hell of modern life, as all, is all we wish. But we cannot escape. We must go through this hell and accept it, knowing it is the love of God that causes our suffering. What terrible anguish to suffer so, not knowing why, indeed thinking there is no reason. The reason is God's love. Do we see it blazing in the darkness? We are blind. 
Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Close quote. For the first time, the works of Dostoevsky, which Allison had once told him to read, began to strike Eugene with their full spiritual power. All of modern man's great existential dilemmas had been dealt with by Dostoevsky, who provided answers which confounded human thought, coming as they did from the gospel of Christ. In the character of Ivan in Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov, Eugene saw the man whom he himself had been all these years an overly intellectual Western man who tries to understand everything with his mind and therefore ends in doubting in atheism. In a short piece he wrote entitled An Answer to Ivan, Eugene attempted to answer Ivan's doubts, at the same time answering the doubts of his own old man. Quote, Once one has risen to the level of doubting, two paths open up to him, the path of questioning of doubting, of trying to understand until one ends in doubting everything, destroyed by doubt, or else giving over oneself over to some false science that quote-unquote explains, i.e. explains away the irreconcilable paradoxes of our existence, or the path of acceptance and prayer, accepting even the doubt without contriving more than one's immediate experience, gives one legitimately to doubt, praying to be given yet more more to try and test us, crying for more life, more to accept and weep over, accepting and praying in the midst of doubt, knowing that the the way of doubt has as many pitfalls as the way of easy acceptance. For everyone who rationalizes away the suffering of living, the hedonists, the philosophers, those who simply don't care, There is at least one who falls into these pitfalls of doubt, who drives himself to doubt more than he really existentially doubts, who explains away the other side of the paradox of human life, the real goodness and penitence and the very pity that drives him to doubt in the first place, as cheaply as the false comforters whom he hates explain away the suffering and sin and evil. For we have entered the time of the last doubt the final and greatest of all, the doubt of everything, the denial of all coherence, the abandonment of the attempt to make sense of the world and human life. But the man of this last doubt in the end falls into the same pit as the false comforters, those who explain away suffering for both have thought too much, have tried too hard to make sense, to explain life. The one explains it too easily, the other finds the lack of explanation perhaps too easy. But both trust the mind. Both think that life should make sense, should be explained, and that if I, a normal questioning man, can or cannot make sense of it, that is all that is needful. O proud and vain man, you can make no sense, no real sense of life until you have lived it far more deeply than your mere doubt reveals. You have gone deeper, it is true, than the false comforters. You have refused to be satisfied with the obvious hypocrisy that shields us from the intolerable suffering of our fellow man. But you too, in your turn, have stopped. Stopped at the very threshold of the mystery of life. You are at a standstill because you have approached the mystery of existence with the mind with questions and demands for explanation, whereas it can only be approached through prostration, humility, prayer, and acceptance. Accept all. Take all into yourself, all that is given to you. If you do not, if you do, not do this, if you shield yourself from one smallest bit of suffering so as to take refuge in the rational attitude of doubt, then the fault lies in yourself, and the world fails to make sense, precisely because you, who look at it, makes no sense. You are foul and constantly contradict yourself, yet you would expect to see the world pure and making sense. It was a powerful quote. I'm going to continue here. 
For years, Eugene had suffered because the truth had eluded him. He had sought the truth above all else and had sought it with his mind. Through Western philosophy, through Ganon's metaphysics, through Eastern religions, even through trying to sidestep logical thought process with his, processes with his mind. Now as, he, now, as his firsthand experience of orthodoxy began to work in his soul, he began to realize that the truth was not at all what he had thought it to be, and that he had been using altogether the wrong tool to find it. Quote, With my exposure to orthodoxy and to orthodox people, he recalled later, a new idea began to enter my awareness. That truth was not just an abstract idea, sought and known by the mind, but was something personal, even a person sought and loved by the heart, and that is how I met Christ." Close quote. While under the influence of Alan Watts and Eastern religion, Eugene had thought that the principle of a personal God was unworthy of the absolute, a product of people's minds, and that beyond this was the impersonal, quote-unquote, self. With his new awareness, however, he found that the exact reverse was true, that belief in an impersonal deity was, quote, a kind of spiritual immaturity. Close quote. As he said, and that beyond this was the creator of the universe, who has revealed himself as a personal absolute, whose name is I Am. The truth Eugene had always sought was indeed a person. He who said, quote, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Close quote. And in the words of Dostoevsky, how beautiful and profound, how manly was this truth. Blessed Augustine, in seeking the truth like Eugene, had once asked, quote, Is truth therefore nothing because it is not diffused through space, finite or infinite? Close quote. And the truth answered him from afar, quote, Yet verily I am that I am. Close quote. Beholding the glory of him who is truth, Augustine could only utter, quote, O truth who art eternity, and love who art truth, and eternity who art love. Close quote. This truth had descended to earth and taken flesh in order that man, that Eugene himself, could be one with him. In the words of Saint Ephraim the Syrian, quote, truth came down into the womb, came forth from it, and cast man's sin aside. Close quote. Now, in order to know the truth, Eugene had to enter into a personal relationship with him to repent of his sins and purify himself of all uncleanliness and to love him with all his being. In his journal, Eugene wrote, quote, Our age has been taught to believe in nothing higher than the human mind and in, this, and in the idea, ideas of that mind. That is why the conflicts of our day are ideological and why truth is not in them. For truth is only in living communion with living truth. Christ, apart from him, there is no life, no truth. Close quote. In other notes, Eugene expressed himself ever and even more strongly. Quote, the truth is Jesus Christ, the God-man. Error is to deny this truth, which is simply to wish oneself to be as God. All who are not with him are against him. For he is truth, the truth of all that is and of our deepest being. And whoever denies that denies all. Indifference is error. The indifferent one has chosen not to accept him. When we are in true submission to him, the truth, the truth dwells in us. Close quote. Many influences had brought Eugene to the threshold of truth. Bach with his elevating Christian music, Ganon with his emphasis on the necessity of ancient tradition and his critique of modernity. But it was orthodoxy being the fullness of Christianity that alone brought him into contact with the fullness of truth, the undistorted image of Jesus Christ. Nothing else had satisfied him, but when he had first encountered orthodoxy personally, his heart had immediately said, quote, this is home, close quote. Even though it took his mind some time to respond. Toward the end of his life, Eugene asked, quote, is there a special organ for receiving revelation from God? Yes, in a certain sense, there is such an organ, though usually we close it and do not let it open up. 
God's revelation is given to something called a loving heart. It is not first of all miracles which reveal God to men, but something about God that is revealed to a heart that is ready for it. This is what is meant by a burning heart. Close quote. With some people, conversion is connected with a certain dramatic moment, but such was not the case with Eugene. His conversion was more of a gradual awakening to what God had already planted in his heart. Many years later, writing to a spiritual seeker interested in René Ganon, Eugene wrote, quote, I am now grateful that my approach to orthodoxy took several years and had nothing of emotional excitement about it. That was Ganon's influence again, and it helped me to go deeper into orthodoxy without the ups and downs that some converts encounter when they are not too ready for something as deep as orthodoxy. Close quote. Even in the slow and dramatic process of his conversion, Eugene was to reach a dimension unfathomed by Ganon. According to one biographer, quote, Ganon could not bring himself to accept that the highest form of knowledge was to be obtained by the union of the mind and the feelings, the union of intellect with love. This being so, he insisted on following this lonely path of pure intellectual intuition, close quote. This tendency had eventually led Ganon to enter a contemplative Sufi tarqah, but, this, but his conversion had hardly been what Eugene experienced. Quote, contrary to what is usually considered a conversion, Ganon wrote, there is nothing in that in which implies superiority in itself of one tradition over another, but simply what one might call reasons of spiritual convenience, which again is something quite other than the individual preference, close quote. What was there in Eugene that enabled him to acquire that which other penetrating intellectuals like Ganon and Shun could not? A friend who knew him for many years has provided this answer. Quote, he was very intelligent, such a genius that few people saw him for what he was. But at the same time, he was very simple, not complicated at all, rather like his father and mother. He would see things exactly the way they were. He was a down-to-earth, warm, honest person. Close quote. In keeping with the gradual nature of his conversion, this side of Eugene was not fully seen until some years later when it was cultivated by fellowship with other Orthodox Christians. On returning to Christianity, he remained silent, mulling it over. There still remained in him, in him layers of bitterness and, uh, and, and uh, sophisticated defenses which he had acquired from his years in the world. The darkness of Ivan Karamazov's great existential doubt still bothered him. He was still in what Blessed Augustine, speaking of the gradual process of his own conversion, had called, quote, the doubtful state of faith, close quote. Now, however, Eugene could see a light of joy and hope at the end of a dark tunnel, and he could not but follow it to the end. It was as if he heard the voice that Augustine had heard when he had first perceived himself far from God, quote, I am the food of grown men. Grow and thou shalt feed upon me. Close quote. Yet more would Eugene have to suffer. But now, as the new idea of the truth as person began to be experienced by him as a living reality, that suffering had meaning. The suffering of the world, Eugene wrote, quote, makes sense, but in no way that can be experienced in words. Its sense must be lived, not spoken about. Close quote. Whereas Eugene's former suffering had been enveloped in an atmosphere of uncertainty and despair, his new suffering had in it an air of hope. The new suffering was the agony of repentance, and as such it carried with it the hope of redemption. Now that Eugene was finally turning to God, he had to begin the painful process of breaking with his former self and drawing closer to the truth as person. In, his word, in, in the words of the Russian spiritual writer St. Theophan the Recluse, which Eugene was to translate into English in his later years, quote, It is something painful, but it saves. It is inevitable that whoever has not experienced such a painful break has not yet begun to live through repentance. It is impossible for a person to begin cleansing himself and everything without, without having gone through this crucible. Close quote. As a Christian, Eugene continued to despise the modern world and hoped for nothing from it. He wanted only to escape it, 
In some ways, he felt even more estranged from the Christianity he had been raised in. For a while, that Christianity was a home in the world. His was radically otherworldly. He had finally found the designation of man's existence, and it was this, to live eternally in another world, united with Christ in his kingdom. Eugene's was an ascetic faith. He wanted a Christianity that emphasized not earthly consolation and benefits, but rather heavenly redemption through intense suffering on earth. No other, ki no other kind rang true to him who had suffered so much. Only a God who allowed his children to be perfected for heaven through suffering, and who himself set the example by coming to life of suffering. Only such a God was capable of drawing the afflicted world to himself and was worthy to be worshipped by the highest spiritual faculties of man. Before Eugene had denied the existence of God who enjoyed, quote unquote, sticking pins in people, close quote. Now he confirmed his faith in he and him who, while allowing suffering in the world, had himself taken on suffering far greater than that of his creation. Again, addressing the doubter in the person of Ivan Karamazov, he wrote, quote, And the God-man, who alone of all suffered as an absolute innocent, do you look for an explanation from him? His explanation is his life. Look at it. We all deserve what we suffer, or at least should look on it with a gladness as an opportunity to live more deeply and approach our fellow man and our God more closely. But Jesus Christ did not deserve to suffer. He had no cause to for he was innocent, and he had nothing to learn, nothing to gain from suffering. His was a purely gratuitous act, such as we cannot even imagine, and he suffered as we cannot imagine anyone suffering, for he alone did not flee pity or the suffering of men. He offered himself no false consolation, no easy escape such as we use every day. He alone lived to the full all the pain of and sorrow of which man is capable. Quote, and so he knows how it is with us. We know existence is suffering, and we know that our God loves us, and for this love suffered even more intensely than the greatest saint. We know this, and yet we presume to doubt, to offer our petty questioning of the meaning of it all. O vile man, accept it and suffer more, and pray to God. Pray for no object, for no cause, merely give your heartfelt prayers and tears to him. He knows the why of it. He knows all. Close quote. One evening, as Eugene was walking along a San Francisco street, he suddenly came upon the same spot where he had once felt the infernal power of Nietzsche's poetry speaking within him, and he had known that the instant the horrors of hell just as the former time, there was now a sunset on the horizon. This time, however, Eugene thought on how he lived during the sunset of Christianity, and he was reminded of how he too had crucified Christ with his sins. He marveled that God should have shown his mercy and revealed himself to one so sinful. The more lowly and vile he felt, the more he was ennobled and uplifted by the grandeur and beauty of the God who yet loved him. When Eugene had stood on this spot before, he had heard the voice of the satanic prophet Nietzsche, who, in response to the suffering and loneliness in the world, had raised a, a fist to God. Now Eugene heard a different voice, that of the Russian prophet Dostoevsky, who, in response to the same suffering, had, th had taught that one should fall to the earth in repentance, thankfulness and awe before the Creator, realizing it was one's own sins that increased the world's suffering. Having striven to throw off the doubts of Ivan, Eugene followed the example of other Karamazov brother, Alyosha, prostrating himself before his Lord Jesus Christ on the darkening San Francisco street. Eugene wept with repentance and contrition. That is the end of the chapter and the end of the first part of the book. Thanks for listening.